Pontiac Aztec that never stops giving. I drove in, you can see it just got parked all random last night. I know this car's always had an issue of overheating. And now that it's, you know, she went all winter. But now that it's starting to get hot outside, I guess uh, it's getting too hot. So she said the reason why it got parked like this all random is because she drove it over here. She barely made it. And she said this is where the engine actually turned off from overheating. And it's not the first time this has happened. Usually when she drops this car off because she barely makes it here and the engine ends up shutting off all by itself. So start it right up. I'm like 90% sure that this thing has like a blown head gasket and it has had one for a long time. And the owner just keeps driving it. It's nice and cold uh, and just not hot yet. So first thing I'm gonna start with is a relative compression test. And I couldn't really get my current clamp around any of the wires. It's just not enough space. So I'm gonna do a AC coupling. I've already pulled out the fuse for the fuel pump so it won't start because this car does not have a clear flood mode. Here goes our results. And this is the second time I did this test. I always like to do this test two or three times just to try to be consistent. And the first time I did it, we had the same exact results with two cylinders showing that they're a little bit lower than the rest but nothing crazy it's just a hair i would not worry about these uh, but based off of what i'm seeing right here i don't see any low contributing cylinder like say if we had i don't know one of them wasn't making compression and it's getting past the head gasket i don't see that here it's not to say we don't have a head gasket issue it is very much possible because the rc test isn't always going to pick up something like that schrodinger's box he had a case study not too long ago where he was suspecting a blown head gasket but the rc test showed that the the compression was there it was fine so he tried to like rule that out and at the end of the day it, it did end up having a blown head gasket and that's just a perfect example of the relative compression test isn't always going to show something like that so it's definitely possible that this car could still have a bad head gasket let's pressurize the cooling system and see if we could find a leak well the more i think about this okay so this 84 percent right here isn't extremely low but it is the lowest one and like i said it's the second time i did this test and it's, the numbers are about the same now, i don't have a second channel going here um, to get a uh, a sink off of which cylinder is which but i think i might just go ahead and do that before we start messing with the cooling system because if it turns out we are losing some coolant internally, I want to know exactly what cylinder to start chasing to see if we could find any coolant making its way inside of the cylinder. So I think it's worth pulling up a second channel here and redoing this test. So I'm just using my second channel here, just a pickup for this ignition wire. Let me get a light on right here. You can see I just have it on what I believe is cylinder number six. All right. And I've already gone ahead and did the test. I'm just showing you what cylinder I'm on. Our second channel, it's hard to see, but it is right there. And it, it actually syncs up with the A icon on the screen right there. Now, the firing order on this engine is pretty easy. It's just one, two, three, four, five, six. So if we know A is our number six consistently, we come down here. So A would be number six. Then it's going to start over again. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. So based off of what we're seeing here, the cylinder with the lowest compression at 84% is going to be cylinder number two. And uh, what's funny is this is the third time we, we do this test and still we get a cylinder at 84%. So that's three times in a row that we get that 84% and it turns out it's cylinder number two. So now I feel more confident. Let's go in here and... Let's do this pressure test on a cooling system. And if we find that we're losing coolant somewhere and it's internally, we know to, it could be something else, but we would start with cylinder number two and start looking inside of there to see if we see anything. So I hope all of this makes sense. Something to note here is I go to touch the cap for the radiator and it was just like this. No turning, no nothing involved. It just kind of came right off. And sure, we could be losing coolant right here, but I'm gonna, put this in the back of my mind so the overflow tank right there is pretty much empty and if we look inside of the radiator the best we can it's pretty much empty so uh, just for the sake of testing let's go ahead and fill it up with water and then we'll pressurize the system this thing took just about two gallons of water it's crazy 
but I started pressurizing it I got only I don't know let's see so about five or seven psi and I could already hear pressure coming out of the engine from somewhere it sounds like somewhere in this area um, I don't see any water just yet I could only hear it but let me go ahead and pressurize it one more time I'm gonna try to stay quiet so you guys can hear it Say the truth. Stop lying to the people, man up. Fine. I'll say it. This idiot lost the video of finding a leaking water pump. It's about a week later and we are back with this Pontiac. I got a few parts in from Rock Auto. I went with a Hitachi water pump because on Rock Auto's website it said that the Hitachi water pump is the OEM pump that came with the car when the car was brand new. So that's why I went with this one. And we have a few different parts from AC Duckle. We got spark plugs, radiator cap, and ignition wires. So I've already gone ahead and put the new pump on. The old one is sitting right there. So at this point, I'm just gonna put the serpentine belt back on it and finish up with this uh, tune-up. I'm just about done with the spark plugs. Got the new ignition wires on it. The ones in the rear, oh my goodness. They were a real pain in the penis to get these things out of there. What a freaking nightmare. <laughs> but the worst is behind me. All right, so we got the belt on the water pump. Ignition wires are in, spark plugs are in. Everything is reconnected. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and fill up the cooling system, and we'll do another pressure test right now. The radiator cap itself is junk. It's toast. It's garbage. It's why I bought a brand new one. So this thing is garbage. And a little gasket right here, if you try to bend it, it just uh, starts to fall apart because it's brittle. So it's not doing anything. You see it tearing right there. So I ordered a AC Delco rad cap for this. And I have that here. So I filled up the cooling system, pressurized it. I got it right up to the red line. And look where we're at now. It's been maybe like a minute. And I don't really see anything dripping off the bottom of the engine. But if I come over here and I turn on my eagle ears, <coughs> I can hear something leaking over here. It sounds like air escaping. I think our leak is right at this upper hose where it connects to this water outlet. So I'm gonna try to focus you guys right here. Look and listen very carefully. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. No, but really, uh, this is the leak, okay? I pressurized the system one more time and here I got some water with some soap in it. Let's see if we can see any bubbles. There it goes. So that's the leak I'm hearing. And if I move the hose around, see how it gets worse. Yeah, so this is actually a really bad coolant leak if you add all of it up so we got this massive you know and you see how every time I move the hose it gets it gets worse so imagine when she's driving and the engine is flexing going over bumps and whatnot how much this hose is gonna move and how much antifreeze is being lost right there and then the leaking water pump that we had and the rad cap that wasn't really sealing all too well you add all that up and it's just a recipe for disaster sugar spice and everything nice I ran out to AutoZone last night, so yes, I got in the zone, and I picked up a upper radiator hose, and this one looks to match up, so let's go ahead and pop this bad boy on. Got the new hose in place, got the original clamp back there, and we're still using the same clamp on here because this is the one that came off, and the hose fit over the uh, pipe very tight on both sides, on this side on the radiator. It was a very snug fit, like you need silicone uh, spray to get it to go on, and that's what I like to see, nice and snug, so you know it's going to seal. And I did make sure to clean any corrosion that was on the uh, pipe right here. You don't want to put a new hose over a bunch of corrosion, it's never going to seal. Uh, so now we can start putting all this stuff back together and do another pressure test. So everything right here is put back together. I refilled or topped off the system with coolant, uh, just a hair, just a little bit because I don't feel like going to get water. And I repressurized it, put it right up to the red line right there. 
right off the bat, first of all, I notice we're not losing pressure. I don't hear anything hissing or dripping anything over here. It's, it sounds good. So we're just going to go ahead and keep eyeing this. And so far, that's looking pretty good to me. Okay, so I walked away for about a half hour, came back, and the needle did drop a little bit. It dropped to like right here, okay, somewhere around there, and then it was holding steady. Uh, so it did drop a little bit. Um, what I was suspecting is maybe it's because I didn't bleed. Well, obviously, I didn't bleed out the cooling system, so there's still got to be air inside of here, so it's trying to compress that air that's still in the system. So I went ahead and opened uh, this bleed valve this time. And sure enough, a ton of air came out. So I repressurized it. Looks like it's holding. Um, but honestly, it's sealing up pretty good. And I'm not going to be waiting on this thing all freaking day. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's sealed up pretty good. Um, if there's any other issues in the future, I'm sure to show its face. But we are like 98% there. Okay. Uh, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and pop the battery back in it. Get as much water as we can out of the system and then i'll top it off or fill it up with brand new antifreeze and uh, we'll bleed out the system uh, if it is going to overheat i'd rather have it do it here where i can pull it back in and we start looking into what else is wrong rather than tell the owner hey it's ready come pick it up and she gets you know 40 minutes away and then finds out that it's still overheating again so i did a first startup of this pontiac and when i first started up immediately we had misfires i could feel it shaking the check engine light was flashing so i connected the scanner and the first thing i noticed is that number three and five were misfiring okay so I went back there and I looked and it turns out three and five are in the back of the engine near the cowl so they're kind of difficult to get to. So I figure, uh, what are the chances of me mixing up the ignition wires for three and five? So all I did was disconnect them at the ignition coil, switch them around. And what do you know, it's fixed. It's actually running right now. No more misfires, um, as you can see right there. You know what, let me go ahead and get RPM. Okay, so there goes our RPM right there up top. See the engine is running, no misfires, absolutely great. So the simplest thing here was to just check to see if the ignition wires were mixed up. So that's what I did, swapped them around, and sure enough, that was a problem. Uh, there's no need to go crazy and start, you know, uh, being all dramatic like a soap opera or something like that, and tearing everything apart. Just switch the ignition wires and see if it fixes the issue, and it did. Now that I got the misfires fixed, it's time to drain the water out of the system. You can see I got it draining right there. So we're gonna try to get as much water as we can out and then fill it up with brand new Dexco. There you go. Drink up, little buddy. I got this Pontiac uh, running to get it up to temperature so I could bleed the cooling system. And the whole time I'm in the car, I could hear this metal rattling sound coming from the rear end of the car and it's super annoying. So I'm like, let me go investigate. I took off this cover right here where we have the floor jack and what's rattling is this thing. And there we go, simple fix. One little zip tie right here, and all the rattling noise is gone. And I could go ahead and put this cover on. And like I said, this is not gonna stop her from using this. She could still easily pull this whole thing out, and she could just slide the zip tie up and off, or just cut it, it's not an issue. But yeah, having that noise gone just makes a massive difference in any car. So it's been running for 15 minutes, you can see, and we're up to 185 degree. You can see the temperature is right there in the center nice and steady nothing crazy uh, but I want to see if the fans turn on so I hit the AC button and it sounded like the AC compressor kicked in but the fans are not turning on so I'm gonna try to control the fans right here with the scanner and see if I can get that to work um, and if they do work with the scanner we'll just let it get up to temperature and try to um, get the fans to turn on so the fans are off, if you guys can see. And I'm already on the fan low speed here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and turn it on. There we go. Now you guys can't see that one, but trust me, it's on. So let's go ahead and try the high speed. Okay, so now we're on the high speed. Let's go ahead and turn it on. There it goes. So 
so it seems like they're both working I'm just gonna go ahead and turn them off and we'll let this get up to temperature so everything is put back together engine is running clean up all my tools got my scanner connected so I drove the Pontiac for around 40 45 minutes and I noticed that whenever you come to a stop or you're waiting it temperature starts to creep up it never really gets in the red but it gets really close and what happens is whenever the, the cooling fans turn on temperature drops a little bit or whenever you start moving and get a decent amount of speed you know the air coming through the radiator cools it down a little bit but again it just keeps on creeping up towards the red it never actually got into the red because the cooling fans kick on and it brings that temp down but still it's a little bit too close for my liking so i stopped at autozone i got in the zone and picked up some of that head gasket uh stop leak stuff and i talked to the owner already so we fixed the leaks and we're gonna put this stop leak stuff in the cooling system I told her if this doesn't do the trick, then it's a done deal. Don't put any more money into this car. The car just isn't worth it. Just scrap the car, okay? Um, so hopefully it works, but I don't know. I don't really know what to think about this. It's the next morning after that pretty long test drive yesterday. Um, I open up the hood. The first thing I notice is this right here is wet. There's no reason why this should be wet because the engine was pretty hot yesterday so this should have all evaporated so that tells me we have a leak somewhere it's not coming from up top something going on right here just tired of coolant leaks on this car um, but as you can see the coolant is completely filled still took the new cap off and there's already a little bit of crap right here so I gotta go ahead and clean that up but what I want to do is Let's go ahead and drain some of the coolant out. We'll run the engine and do a test to see if there is a head gasket leak because I'm pretty sure there is. At least my suspicion. You can see the fluid is nice and blue. Sorry the glass is a little hazy or the plastic, but you can see it's blue. Let me go ahead and set this up. So I did it for about 30 seconds and as you can see it did not turn yellow which I'm very surprised. But let's follow the instructions on the uh, on the tester, the bottle for the for this tester. It says to drain some of the cooling, which I did. Then it says to let the engine run for 10 minutes. I did not do that, okay? Uh, but let's go ahead and do that right now. So we're at the 9 minute mark. I'm a little bit impatient. But I think 9 minutes is plenty. Let's go ahead and test it again. So we are well past the 10 minute mark. I even dumped out the old fluid and put some new stuff in here. And I did the test again and that still looks pretty blue to me. It's supposed to turn yellow if it indicates uh, combustion gases and yeah I'm not seeing it which is really <laughs> really surprising to me. So I'm going to go ahead and shut the engine off. But since that test is showing up pretty much as a negative it makes me hard to justify pouring that uh head gasket stop leak crap into the cooling system because we all know that stuff isn't good for engines or the cooling system it tends to clog things up you know hence its job all right so back to the pressure tester and i could definitely tell we are losing pressure very slowly but where is it going i don't see any leaks let me keep looking around i don't know i, I just don't want to give up on this car <laughs> for anyone wondering about the oil Go ahead and check it. I already cleaned off the dipstick once. You can see the oil level is about right there, so more or less where it should be. It's not artificially being uh, or raising the oil because coolant was getting into the oil somehow, and the oil looks normal. It doesn't look like a milkshake, you know, again, indicating like coolant mixing with oil. So everything looks pretty good here. I'm not seeing any bad signs. I just went inside the car feeling for uh, wet carpets underneath the heater core. I don't feel anything wet. You know, maybe maybe we had a leaking heater core. Went ahead and pressurized the system again. After a few minutes, pretty much lost all of our pressure. So it's going somewhere. I just don't know where it's going. There's no drips underneath the engine, and it's driving me crazy. You know, is a I'm not too familiar with these engines. I don't know if there is some sort of O-ring underneath the intake manifold or something where, you know, coolant passes through it. You know, internal leaks, I have no idea. 
put the car up on my ramps so I can slide underneath the car and see if I can see anything, but I really don't. Um, you know, the bottom of the engine just covered in oil and stuff like that, so it's hard to tell. But I noticed that if I pressurize the system and I stand right here and I stay very quiet, <laughs> I can hear some sort of leak somewhere in this area right here a noise somewhere around here right so i made like two can sam and i just followed my ear wait isn't it follow my nose and eh, it doesn't matter anyway so it just kept bringing me this way this way this way this way and it led me to this right here you see the bubbles developing down there that's because i sprayed it with some water that has soap in it but you could see clearly where our leak is at and that happens to be the radiator it's right next to the coolant hose that I just replaced and no it's not the coolant hose it is in fact the radiator it's right at the crimp where the crimp is onto the plastic tank you know what I'm really glad I decided to trust my better judgment and not put that head gasket stop leak in the system because that, that stuff isn't good it, it really is the last resort and I'm glad I decided to just you know what let's wait let's keep digging so this thing needs a radiator now that sucks the Aztec that never stops giving kind of like herpes we're back with this thing and we have some new parts for it so we have a new PCV valve simply because it was dirt cheap and I know this thing has never been changed we're in here let's just change it right anyway so I decided since we're gonna be replacing a radiator and pretty much overhauled the entire cooling system on this thing why not just do the thermostat while we're in here so I got a new thermostat housing which is this whole pipe right here uh, a new thermostat itself and the factory thermostat on this thing is a 95 degree thermostat and I'm bumping it down to 80 degree so hopefully uh, with an 80 degree thermostat that means it's going to open up sooner and the cooling system can help fight that overheating much faster than it normally would so hopefully that works out and I also got a new gasket for the throttle body only because uh, from what I saw online, the easiest way to get to that thermostat is to remove the throttle body. So since I'm going to be removing it, let's replace the gasket while we're in there. So I got the thermostat off and the throttle body off. As you can see, I cleaned up the surfaces already. Now thermostat housing for the lower bolt has a slot in it, as you can see. And it's supposed to help, you know, maybe removing and installing and making it easier so you don't have to remove the bolt all the way. But that's complete horseshit because it's just an illusion you can never get this thing out of here with the thermostat in if you just loosen that bolt that bolt has to come completely out so everything's cleaned up and i'm just gonna go ahead and get the new parts and start putting this stuff back together and once i'm done with all of this i'll move on to the radiator but the main reason why i bought this is because you know the imperfections on the old surface it just makes it more difficult to seal I didn't want to have to deal with all of that crap since this part is just so cheap. It's like just buy a new one, you know. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this on right now. So I got everything put back together on this side and I got the system pressurized right now just checking for leaks. I don't see any leaks over here. Uh, but something that I do see and it's something I noticed before is right here right at this base you can see how it's wet and if i go ahead and dry this up I just go ahead and watch it come back card it never stops giving i think i'm gonna have to pull this out and i'm pretty sure there's an o-ring it was the o-ring that came off of the car and as soon as you touch it it just falls apart it's so freaking brittle everything just snaps look at that measured it up against a new one and this one is the closest one that I have so let's see if I could fit this on there and make it work finally it looks like I have a win here and for the first time something went easy and according to plan so I put the new o-ring on it the system is now pressurized as you can see and if we zoom in right here we have absolutely no leaks Go ahead and blow off the system just to show you guys absolutely no water seeping out and we are still holding pressure 
finally something went according to plan. I was really worried about this because whenever you're replacing an O-ring, you really want to clean the two mating surfaces. And that's just something I couldn't do because I was not about to disconnect this line and take this whole pipe off the car through that. So I took my chances with just uh, blowing it out with compressed air the best I can where the O-ring sits. And went in there with the wire brush, like, you know, the little bit that I can. And it looked like it's holding up very well. So, ah, uh, thank the gods. Final thing we're waiting on is this radiator. It has not come in yet, but it's supposed to get delivered today. So it is a different day and we finally got the new radiator in. As you can see, I already removed the fans and I'm on my way to getting this old radiator out of here. And here we have the radiator, it's out of the car. Honestly, not the worst radiator I've had to remove. It wasn't exactly a walk in a park, but I've had way worse. New radiator is installed, and for the most part, most things are installed. But I decided to, before I 100% button it up, do a pressure test. And so far, it's looking pretty good. I'm not seeing any leaks. The pressure tester is holding pretty good. Minus my adapter, for some reason, it's not sealing very well. But if you just don't look at it, don't breathe anywhere near it, it holds pressure, okay? And the needle stays nice and steady. So I'm happy with that. It's always uh, a bit worrisome installing a new radiator because there's just so much potential for something to go wrong. One little nick on a radiator and you damage the whole thing. So I've had the car running for some time now, just nothing crazy, like 10, 15 minutes. You can see our temperature is going up. And right now we are currently at 174 degree. Now don't forget we put 180 degree thermostat in this thing, okay? And it already got up to that point. So I watched it go up to uh, about 187 degree. All of a sudden, the temperature dropped down to 172 so I'm assuming once it hit 187 that's the point where the thermostat opened up and that's why it started to cool off the coolant but as you can see temperature is going up slowly let's keep an eye on this needle and just let the car uh, continue to run see what happens so the car has been running for 25 minutes as you can see right there and just with the car idling, of course, we're not driving it, so there's no airflow coming through the radiator. The temperature did start to rise again. It got right up to that white line right before the red. And then I decided, you know what? We're going into summertime. She's going to be driving, most likely scenario, she's going to be driving with the AC on. Okay, and what does that do? That forces the fans to turn on. So right now the fans are on. We have cold air blowing out the vents. And that dropped the temperature from 220 all the way down. So about 197 198 and it even went lower look at that 195 so that's what the fans running I think the biggest issue with this car is the fans they're programmed to turn on at a real high temperature which really just baffles me the fans turn on at like 227 degrees or something like that it's something crazy if those fans turned on at like I don't know 210 it would completely cool off this car this car would ride all day at around 200 degree no issues at all and to actually get this thing to overheat as in to go into the red that's about as close as i could get it and that's with me holding my foot on the accelerator pedal at about 1500 rpm car has been running for about an hour now and i can't get it to overheat overheat like really get into the red it's just not going to happen and once it gets to 224 it turns on the low speed fans and it drops on the 215 and rinse and repeat it keeps doing that cycle over and over yes the ac is on you can see the high speed fans are now on and let's just keep an eye on this temperature that's enough testing for tonight i can't get it to actually go into the red and overheat as bad as she was getting it to do and i don't see any leaks on anything that i did everything looks nice and dry especially that one right there that's freaking awesome tomorrow i'll do an actual driving test and see how it goes now the next day and i drained out most of the water out of the system 
I put a little bit of concentrate dex pool in here just to try to balance out the water that's already inside the engine and then I started filling it up with 50-50 uh, dex pool and as you can see the engine's been running for I don't know maybe like seven eight minutes and I'm in the process of bleeding out the cooling system making sure to open up that valve and the other valve over there to get the air out of the system and then uh, once I'm done with the bleeding, well, we'll take it out for a test drive. So it's now the next day and I've been driving this car for over an hour. And it's doing the same thing over and over. Goes up to 224, cooling fan turns on, drops down to 215, rinse and repeat. Same thing over and over. Now it's a nice warm 80 degree day, okay? And I purposely left the AC off because I didn't want to force the fans to turn on I just want to see how the system acts under normal conditions without us forcing the cooling fans on and this is what we got it's not is it running hot yes technically yes but it's not overheating once it gets to 224 fans kick on boom it drops down rinse and repeat and that's it I'm gonna make sure to tell the owner that hey if this thing really starts to overheat like it was before when you brought it to me like it's going into the red and smoke coming from underneath the hood just scrap the car because the car has way too many issues going on uh, the engine mounts are completely destroyed so this hour that I've been in the car I got the biggest headache right now okay because the amount of vibrations that are being transmitted inside of here it, it I can't be in this car any longer okay um, the suspension clunks around like crazy none of these gauges right here light up the only reason you could see them is because i have the flash on on my camera but besides that if you drive this car at night there are no lights any of this stuff does not work okay uh the transmission hard shifting and it even decides when it wants to grab drive and reverse sometimes you put it in drive it doesn't want to move you got to wait a few seconds uh there's just way too many issues going on with this car so as of right now driving the car for over an hour and the engine's still running as long as it keeps doing this old same dance right here, I'm perfectly happy with this. And I hope the owner gets plenty more time out of this car. But that's it for this one. I know you guys are going to leave comments below. Uh, some of you guys who have a lot more experience with these uh, Pontiacs or these engines and, and know uh, like known failures on these things like the intake manifold gaskets, the head gaskets, things like that. Uh, sure, go ahead and leave your comments below. I always appreciate those type of things. I feel like I've done all I can to alleviate this overheating issue on this car, but that's it for this one. Catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.